What's up y'all, this is Zar from AudioZar.net. I want to do a video showing you how Pipeline works in Studio One. Pipeline is Presonus's hardware integration plugin. So what this allows you to do is use analog gear in Studio One. Now you're going to need two things to make this plugin work. Uh, one is enough inputs and outputs on your interface and two is some analog gear. So here's part of a session here. I'll play you a bit of it real quick. Okay, so I'm going to put Pipeline on the lead vocal here. And let's take a second to go through the interface. So we've got, you got send controls here where you're sending out. Uh, you got return on the right side which, where you're returning back in. Uh, the upper right here shows the latency. And here we set the send and return routing. So like I was saying with the extra inputs and outputs on your interface, uh, if you're mixing in the box and typically outputs one and two you're going to use for your monitors. But if you have say input, output three and four, five, six, and seven and eight on your interface, uh, you can use those to route your signal. So I'm going to use a JDK R24 EQ here. Now my Profire 2626, I have the output of the Profire connected to the input of the EQ and I'm coming out the EQ into the same channel, which is a uh, Profire input seven. Now, as you can see with, with Pipeline, you can route this anywhere you wanna go. Uh, if you're doing this in Pro Tools, say you can only go, if you're going out four, you'd have to come back in four. That can't change. Um, whereas, with pipeline here, I can send out and come back in any channel. Um, now, the offset here, if you're using a digital reverb, a hardware digital reverb, uh, there may be some latency in there that's not that's not uh, calculated for up here. So you could use the offset to, uh, to fix that latency. And with this latency, uh, 8.30, milliseconds what it basically means is it takes 8.30 milliseconds for the signal to travel out of studio one out of my profile output seven into the EQ out the EQ back into input seven on the profile so like I said I'm using the JDK R24 so let's take a look at that EQ now as you notice there's no inputs and output controls on this EQ but that's fine because with pipeline I have control over the send and return so I can make the signal louder going into the EQ I can make it softer uh, same way with the return back in so if I'm doing a lot of boosting a lot of times on the return you'd want to bring that down some to stop from clipping uh, you also got phase invert here as well as mix now, I don't know why they named this 1.00 it's kind of strange to me because typically you see 100 and uh, you can dial it back from there so what this mix does is basically a wet and dry button or knob I should say I can I mean at 50 and now I've got 50% of the dry signal and 50% wet so I'm using this is really good for if you want to do parallel compression with a uh, with the analog compressor with this mix knob I can mix back in some of the dry signal uh, without having to do it with a fader on the DAW. So that's really cool there. So let's check the signal out here. I'm telling you I don't fit that picture. I'm trying to plead with you. Well, I do the EQ here. Um, I just took out all the lows, so it's got kind of a, a telephone type effect here. What I really like about Pipeline is that I can bypass this in real time and listen to what I've done with the EQ and listen to the dry signal. But it really gonna listen, never gonna listen. That's really handy because that's something I couldn't do in Pro Tools so I really enjoyed this bypass feature. Um, and also see unnamed device you know once we can go ahead and 
name that JDKR24. Uh, I can also go here and store that as a preset. So when I use this EQ again, I can pull it up as a preset and everything's there. Now, another cool thing about Pipeline, I can, well, I've got this on the lead vocal right now. I can use the same instance of Pipeline with the same send and return on every channel here. If I wanted to, I can do that. Um, now, of course, if I'm sending, I've got here uh, maybe about 10 tracks. If I'm sending all 10 of those tracks into one channel of EQ, then um, as you can guess, there's going to be a lot of signal going in. I'd have to really bring down the send and return so it wouldn't clip. But the cool thing is, I can do it if I wanted to. I haven't really thought of an instance where I would want to do that, put multiple channels through uh, one piece of analog gear like that, but you do have the option with Pipeline. So, as I said, Pipeline is really cool. Uh, if you didn't know how to use it or what it was, uh, hopefully this video helped, and uh, see y'all next time. I want to back up and talk about uh, latency and the offset here. This offset, you won't need this unless you're using, uh, like I said, a hardware digital reverb. Because uh, what will happen is, if you're using one of those, then Studio One may not calculate for that latency. Uh, the latency you see up here in the upper right, this uh, 8.28 milliseconds, uh, Studio One has automatic delay compensation, so it's going to automatically delay your tracks by 8.28 milliseconds, so everything stays in time. With a digital hardware reverb, uh, there's some processing that goes on that it doesn't get accounted for. Now with the latency, or the signal moves through the through the analog gear nearly at the speed of light. Where the latency comes in is the processing time that it takes for the computer to process that signal going out and processing it coming back in. So really for this offset, um, I mean more than nine times out of 10, you're gonna leave this at zero. If you're just using any other analog gear, compressors, EQs, that's, you're gonna leave that at zero. It's gonna automatically compensate for the latency in this upper right corner. All right, catch y'all next time.